Hello and welcome back to the Avoid the Tire Wall podcast. Today we're joined by a special guest, Albert Webster. Albert, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Albert Webster. Um, I'm a young racing driver, 18 years, years old. I've been racing since I was six, started in short oval, progressed up to uh, circuit racing in 2020. Uh, this year I've won the mini uh, scholarship to race in the JCW Sport for 2024. So if you could sum up your 2023 season in three words, what would they be? Uh, successful, enjoyable, um, fun. What is the most memorable moment of your career so far? Um, of my career, I, it, it's got to be the last race at Silverstone when I won the championship. It's the first big championship that I've won for, for a good few years. Um first real championship I've done really well in in circuit racing um yeah winning that last um uh coming third in the last race winning the championship that's got to be the best bit so far I think congratulations thank you can you talk us through the process of the mini challenge scholarship like applying to it you know doing the events etc yeah of course um so we just I just saw it online one of my friends um told me about it so I had a look into it I convinced my parents to let me do it so we went into it not knowing anything about it or what it was about so we signed up for the first round which was Capital Carts in London uh we went there enjoyed the first day so we did a uh, a qualifying session in goat carts a race session and then afterwards I jumped on the simulators with Ash Sutton and then we did a media interview that was the first round uh, really enjoyed it, ran really smoothly. Um, that was back in the start of December. And then a few weeks later, we got an email saying I, I got through to the second round, which was at Croft, which was a surprise, to be honest. Got through to the second round, which there we drove around the Mini Cooper Challenge cars, which honestly, so fun, reminded me of my Fiesta Junior in the similar, not too much power, but awesome to drive. Um, that night, me and my dad got an email um, saying I got through to the second round, uh, the third round, sorry, which is also at Croft, uh, where I got to drive the JCW Sport car for the first time. Uh, I was the first one out in it in the morning on wet conditions. And then later on that day, I drove the Mini Cooper again, um, getting coached by Jamie going in the JCW. Um, and yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, do you think having the touring cars drivers... Because I remember seeing on Instagram a couple of photos. Do you think having them like mentoring you helped? Uh yeah. So I when we we got in, we had a little chat about what I'd raced before, and they just went, "Yeah, not a problem. We'll go for it. We'll, I'll give you little tips and bits and bobs to work on." Um. So we just went out, had fun. You know, I went out for the first session with Ronan Pearson. Um. We went out really really enjoyed it he was just telling me oh if you try this uh you go for quicker through here and here and here and then dan zelos did the same for me in the afternoon um it really really helped and then the second day i had jamie going in the jcw and yeah again he said the same things he gave me little pointers to get me quicker has being a part of the motorsport uk academy helped to develop your career definitely um they've definitely taught us uh, a lot of things about racing and the best way to go about it they haven't just told us everything to do with racing drivers. They've brought in different people who are involved in motorsport but aren't racing drivers. So we've had commentators, uh, teams, all of that come in and speak to us and give us uh, valuable information. Um, you know, we learn about esports and how that's evolving and progressing into the, the, the motorsport uh, side of racing. Um, and then motor vehicle as well, where we learn about the cars and how it works, which can then we can relay back to our team and help them um, get the car fixed quicker. Don't you only have to go like a couple days a week or something? Like someone told me it was two days a week. Uh, so it's four days a week, two weeks a month. Um, so, you know, it's only a part time course. So currently I'm off for my two weeks, but then I'm going back on the 4th, I think it is, of March. And then I've got two weeks on. And then again, I got two weeks off um, to for the race season. It's because we start about then. It just gives us time to prepare and do everything towards racing whilst we're not at college. Is it like split? So like second year is going for two weeks and then the first year is going for two weeks or is it all together? Uh, all together. So we'd all just turn up 
uh, two weeks at a time, and then all of us will go home at two weeks at a time. So yeah, it's it's good to see everyone. The year ones coming in, and then speaking to and being friends all year two as well. What made you want to be a racing driver, and how did you get started? So my great granddad was a rally driver. Um, my granddad was a rally driver and touring car driver. My dad uh, raced. My mum raced. My uncle also raced. Uh, it's just been a family thing. And then when I was just turned six, my granddad bought me a first mini sprint. I think they're called Ninja Carts now. It's just a little goat cart with a roll cage on. Uh, I did that when I was six. I started that when I was six, yeah, and then I've carried on. I haven't stopped since. So I'm just about to start my 13th year of racing. Can you walk us through your typical race day routine? Yeah, not a problem. Um, so it's, we've got two races on. We normally have about two races on a day. So I wake up whenever I do. I don't set an alarm unless it's a really early morning race, just so I can get a nice sleep, get keep, make sure I'm um, ready for the day. I wake up, um, go have a shower, get ready. Um, I'll come back, and then by that time, my sisters, um, she normally cooks for us recently. Um, we normally have like a bacon butty or something. Wake up in the morning. Um, we've got a first race coming up. I'm. I don't like wearing my overalls too much, so I always get changed right at the last minute. Uh, get in my car, go to um, was it the assembly area, just sit, chill there for a minute, get me a helmet on a couple of minutes before, sit in there. I normally do end up falling asleep just before I go out. Um, I don't know why. I always just have always just been so relaxed in the car. I haven't had to be there angsting or anything. I've just got in the car, put my belts on, and fallen asleep. After the race, come back do all the scrutineer checks, everything like that, get back to this um, awning or garage if we're lucky enough to have them. Um, I'll eat a bit of lunch, depending on what day it is. We don't know what I have, really. Um, yeah, and then just do the similar thing again, get ready for the race, go out and race, come back through the scrutineering. You know, I don't have a set thing to do it all day. It's just depending on what's happening during that day and what I've got to do if I've got to go speak to people and meet with sponsors and uh, have the time with them and speak to the family and make sure everyone's happy, team's all good, race car's ready to go, just making sure everything's running as smoothly as possible. Can you tell us about a particularly difficult race you've had and how you overcame the challenges? Uh, the first one comes to mind is uh, Silverstone National race three. It was a reverse grid. Um, so I won the previous race. So I started eighth in the third race. Uh, going through the first, first lap, I think it was turn two, I got hit off and I dropped all the way down to 15th or 16th, I think it was. And I just needed to get over that and get on it. So I was really, um, I was driving quite angrily, which can hinder you, but it helped me at this point just because I was really, really fast. I was just driving through the fields, um, getting through everyone. A few incidents happened in front of me that helped me a little bit, but then I come back through from 15th to win the race. Um, but that's probably the hardest race. I really came out of that really, really sweating and tired after that, just because I put literally all my, my effort into that one. What is your long-term ambition? Um, Ideally, if I can find the sponsorship in the back end, I'd love to be a touring car driver, um, just because it's so cool. You know, you can't beat a touring car race. They're so close, uh, entertaining um i'd love to have a go in a gt car so like the gt4 gt3 just because it is such a different style of racing i'd love to do the endurance side of it as well but long-term goal um i'd love to be a touring car driver yeah touring car weekends are good as well because like the fans can have like loads of fun but yeah like the fans like um accelerate last year at alton they had like a proper thing where they like got all the fans involved as well that was a, such a great sentence Made so much sense. Yeah, no, it is good. I can't honestly. I can't wait to be on the touring car package this year. Um, to be in front of the hundreds of thousands of people there will be a lot different to the weekends I've been racing on recently. Um, yeah, I just can't wait to do it. It's it'll be such a big step up for me. It'll be really really good. So, uh, link into that. So, if you are racing mini challenge. Do you think that it will be beneficial to be on the Toka package in terms of sponsorship? Definitely, because um, from last year's, there was over 17 million people watching just the minis race. Um, that was on ITV4. 
and well it was as well as like three hundred and fifty thousand people at the track uh throughout the years uh throughout the year sorry um you know that helps a lot because it gets more people on the sponsors you know if you've got the side of a car you you'd rather have millions of people watching it than tens of thousands so it just gets it helps out you know you can give get sponsors in and go oh do you want to come to the race weekends come and watch touring cars we'll get you the access and whatnot and it really does help out getting people on board and making them want to follow you and sponsor you uh what is the main difference between driving the mini and the fiesta um so currently i've only had out uh the 15 minutes out at croft um with 15 minutes across uh, that's all i've had so far we haven't uh, got any testing but so far but the only real difference is the fiesta the way we've set it up uh, with suspension and everything we've got it so aggressive that the mini felt really really easy to drive it was just set up nice and planted and you know it made it feel so good and it made me feel comfortable in it straight away um the mini obviously has slightly less power but then it has a little bit more of an aero package on it so there's the differences to learn through that um but you know they're very very similar to the fiesta in the sort of h pattern brake, brake horsepower and a turbo so it's fairly similar i think that gave me advantage through the scholarship but then um yeah i, I just can't wait to get out properly testing and racing in it now has winning the uh, fiesta championship a mini scholarship provided you of any opportunities you wouldn't have had before uh yeah definitely um you know so many people have got in contact with us offering uh things to race um giving us a cheaper deal than what it should be um you know we're not taking them because we're doing the minis this year and I, mean, I might do a few rounds of fiestas you know so many people have asked oh can we sponsor you and we'd love to be backing you and it has really helped us um we're not the richest family in the world we can just about we can afford racing but with my little sister this year we really need back in and people to help us and push me to my limit and allow me to get to the places where I want to go what is one piece of advice that has stuck with you oh um I don't know really we've got I've had a lot of tuition over the years from lots of different people um but you know you can't beat the the saying if if there's a gap if there's no if you there's a gap and you no longer go for it you're not a racing driver you know you can't beat it because you know I'm quite an aggressive driver in that I will go for a gap if it's there um and I won't back down from someone in uh, on a racetrack so I think that's stuck with me quite a bit. Can you talk us through what race weekend prep looks like so like going to the gym like learning the circuits or memorizing the circuits uh yeah so if it's a weekend where i've never been to the track i will then go on my simulator find out um what the best simulator is for that track so uh, i normally use i racing but some tracks such as croft fruxton aren't on there so i'll find another simulator that has uh, has them uh i'll go on spend a couple of hours just going through it on different cars working out the best lines um i'll go to the gym at the start of a race week but as soon as it gets to like wednesday i might only go for go to the gym have a run have a cardio session not where i'm uh, straining my muscles um but that's it really i don't really do much on um because i know the tracks a lot i don't spend too much time on the simulators i know them inside and out now doing four years on in fiestas and knowing the tracks um and then yeah i'll just make sure i'm in the right mindset for it make sure I've not got any access, excess stress or anything like that. Which circuit are you looking forward to most this season? Um, France Hatch GP, the last round of minis. I can't wait for that. Um, I've done the Indy a few times now, but I just can't wait to get out, out of the back towards the forest and through the uh, fast right-handers and through that section. I can't wait for it. Are you going to Alton this year? We are, yes. When we're like when touring. Awesome. See if my work will let me go there or let me have the day off. Thank you for watching this week's episode of the Avoid the Tire Wall podcast. And thank you to Albert for agreeing to do this interview. See you next week. Bye.